Hi guys and welcome back to another exciting episode. In this episode we're going to have a look at one of my favourite palms. This one over here called the Sago Palm. It is a beautiful palm and it is a beautiful green. It's a small palm for uh, small gardens. You can grow it in containers. But did you know it's also very poisonous to pets and animals? So stay tuned guys, we're going to take a deeper dive into Sago Palms. So yeah, so they're poisonous to, to dogs, cats, and even people. And a small amount can actually be quite fatal, especially to, to uh, dogs and animals. Okay, let's, let's go back into history for the, of, of these plants, because these plants have been around a long time. And when I say, I'm saying their common name is Sago Palm, in actual fact, they're not actually a palm at all. They're more related to conifers. They're a cycad, and they go back three, at least 300 million years ago. And so they have been around a long time. So they're more closely related to, to conifers because they produce what's called naked seeds, uh, exposed seeds like, like uh, cones. And they do actually produce a cone. Sago palms are actually this a male and female uh, palm and the female will produce very large cones and the male cones are quite small. I'll show you an image uh, because there's one I saw the other day at Botanic Gardens. Look at the size of that. It must be around about 25 centimeters long, high, by about 10 or 12 wide. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit of the history of these plants, but uh, let's dig deeper uh, into basically where and how to grow these palms. So first of all, heat tolerance. These plants can tolerate quite a bit of heat, up to 100 Fahrenheit, I believe that's 38 Celsius, or down to about minus 9 Celsius, very cold. In fact, I've seen pictures of these in the snow. Uh, minus 9 is 15 Fahrenheit for you guys in the USA. Um, okay, so um, they can tolerate those hot and cold temperatures. That's why they can survive in many different conditions. But they do prefer, obviously, they don't want extended times in those conditions. So if it's very cold for long, a long time, you'd need to protect them from that sort of coldness. And if it's very hot, you'd need to make sure you had ample water. But growing conditions for these, they're very slow growing. So this plant here, I initially had it in a container and it didn't particularly like being in the container, but it stayed very small. So they will stay small, but the ultimate um, height of these things really if they're in this condition this this plant here has been in for about 20 years and it started off about this sort of size so very small and now it is roughly around about sort of a little bit over a meter one about 1.3 meters wide and you can see it's around about sort of a meter high once it forms its trunk though it will grow but it's going to take a long long time this is why they great plants for small gardens so yeah, that tells you a little bit about them. Pests and diseases, not really much. I have seen the passion vine hopper on here and they do get a couple of them, but they're pretty tough, pretty hardy plants. That's why I'd recommend them for any small garden. Um, yeah, bearing in mind about the, the toxins though. Yep, so we mentioned the toxins. The toxins are in all parts of this plant, the leaves, the seeds. It's called psych psychasin and it can basically damage the liver in a small amount and cause diarrhea not pleasant. It's one of the three most toxic palms. So the other two, if you're interested, are Bismarck palm. It's got oxalic acid, not as bad. And also the queen palm, the Cyagoras romanziopinum. Interesting enough though, the although this is called the Sago palm and the pith in the center of the of the trunk there can be used for Sago. It's not the main commercial plant that's used for Sago, but it is one that can be used. Okay guys, that wraps up Psychas Revoluta, the Sago Palm. Very interesting palm, very useful for your gardens. Definitely recommend it. Uh, just, with, just be careful if you've got pets, small children. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, then like, subscribe. If you've got one of these in your own uh, garden or you've had experience with them, please comment below. It'd be good to hear about uh, all these different uh, experiences people have had with them. Okay, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.